Welcome to another episode of Adventure King's Rig Reviews, where we profile epic four-wheel drive and camping builds to deliver some serious inspiration for your own build-up. This time around, I'm here with my old mate, Joel, to talk about his incredible new 200 series Land Cruiser. Now, in case you missed it, we just did a four-part series covering the build-up of this exact vehicle. And I've dropped the link in the comments. Now, before we get into it, do yourself a favor, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you see every video in this epic series. Well, let's get into it. 10 Red Hot questions about a Red Hot rig. Okay, Joel, first question, mate. Why a 200 series? Well, I've got to get with the times, mate. You've got to get with the times, all this new technology and everything else, and this thing popped up at an unreal price. Couldn't turn it down. And um, yeah, we'll have a crack. They're the ultimate tow rig, in Australia anyway. They definitely are. You know, Anything locally sold, obviously you've got Dodge Rams and that Oh, you've got all that sort that's of stuff, and that's, and that's out of my price range, to be honest. But um, this thing here, I'm super happy so far. So Joel, your last rig, big GU Core Cab Ute, you drove it around Australia multiple times. What was it like getting out of that and into this? Oh, it's a totally different car. I mean, IFS, leather, <laughs> you know, plenty of power in this thing, even though the GU had had a lot of power as well, but um, they're not even the same car, you know. And the bonus is too, I've got five seats in this, whereas the other one, single cab, you got no room. Yeah, very true, mate, very good point. Now, that Patrol, it had well over 400,000 on it. Yep. 400,000 on the clock, never had the head off it. You'd driven it multiple times around Australia. It was just reliable as. Question I want to ask you, do you reckon you're going to get those sort of numbers, that 400 plus reliable sort of Ks out of this thing? 100%, I reckon I will. I mean, that, that the Patrol had 425,000 Ks or something like that. It had over 30 PSI boost up it for 300,000 Ks of that as well. Unopened motor, never used oil, never blew smoke, never got hot. I think service, servicing's number one. You know, I'm going to service this thing regularly and they're a diesel, they're not fast. You, you don't have to rev them out and all this sort of stuff. So I, I reckon I'll see 500,000 Ks out of this. And I suppose the big thing is you've done all that work to the Patrol to get it to the level that this factory motor is already at. So you're yeah. starting from the same sort of level. If you do want to do power ups, you're obviously going to get more out of it. But if you just want to keep it reliable, it's already at that sort of power level. Yeah, 100%. I mean, I'm not going to keep this stock. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. This thing's going to have big power as well. But um, yeah, that, I think I'll definitely see a lot of Ks out of this motor. Okay, so I think the question that's on just about everyone's mind is, it's a big diesel V8. What sort of fuel economy are you getting and how does it compare to the Patrol? What are you getting out of that? Look, the Patrol, fully loaded, was doing 16 to 18 litres to the 100. Yeah, it wasn't good, but it wasn't too bad either. This here, it was doing 10. When it yeah, was standard, right. it was doing 10s. Now, with all the gear on it, the bigger wheels, the bigger wheels really hurt it. Mm. And it's doing around 14 to 15 litres per 100 now. Right. So it's still not too bad. It's, it's, it's one of those things like, yes, you could have a stock standard four-wheel drive with nothing on it, and it might do 10, eight even litres to 100 Ks, one of these modern turbo diesel dual cabs, but you put the gear that you want on it, like fuel is gonna be the trade-off. Yeah, weight, weight and big tyres. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's gonna knock anything around, um, but I'm still happy with it. So it is a big four-wheel drive. It's got the big lift, it's got 35s. Why that size lift? Why those tyres? Well, you know, I still need to get diff clearance. So, I mean, it's, it's reasonably low in the suspension, but it's got the big tyres, and that's what I want. You know, you need the ground clearance, it's got bash plates under it, so I can still get through the big ruts and over the tree roots and whatever else. And look, the other thing is there's no denying it looks good on those wheels and tyres, eh? It really does, mate. And look, it, they fill the guards, it's in proportion, and I like the way it is. So it's obviously been set up as a big, tough touring rig, but I want to know, how does it handle those tough, technical, low-range tracks? Look, it actually surprisingly does well. The car is very wide. I mm. mean, we all know that. It's a 200 series. It's a wide car. But with the traction control and crawl control and all these other buttons and stuff, it just, it just goes, it drives. Now, yeah. it hasn't got lockers in it? It doesn't have lockers. So, and it's got crawl control, which is similar, but it does not have lock diffs. Hmm. So, I mean, and they're two different things as well. I, I think I have seen that crawl control in action from watching your car the other day. Um, it's pretty crazy. You just sort of like point it up a hill and it I, does it. I don't even understand it. It just does things, it makes noises and it keeps driving. I mean, it's not like it's twin locked, but it does go very well. And the auto is just, just rounds it off nicely. You can't beat it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy technology, right? If you, if you go back, what, 10, 15 years when four drive started coming out with traction control systems, a lot of four wheel drivers, a bit iffy about it, thinking, is it gonna break down? Is it another thing that you can't repair out in the bush? But I think the proof's in the pudding. This thing's just insane. It seems to be. I mean, it, 
give me another couple of years on yeah, it. Yeah. I had that patrol for eight years and it had nothing. Like it was mechanical injection, you know, solid axle, everything else. But I got a good feeling about this. I think they've nutted out all the problems and I feel like it's gonna be a good thing. So talking of problems, early 200 series Land Cruisers did have those oil use problems. You're not seeing any of that? Yeah, they had an oil use problem. No, this one doesn't. I've, I've got quite a few Ks on this one already. Doesn't use oil. You know, it's got plenty of power and everything else. So we'll just play it by you. I'm not sold on the electronics. Right. They scare me a little bit. Sure, yeah. But in saying that, they really help you on the tracks as well. And look, having seen it on the tracks, yeah, I agree. So look, straight up, traction control versus diff locks. Does it replace diff locks? What's your opinion? No, not at all. Not, not even close, like they're totally different things. A diff lock actually locks your diffs solid. You know, it's like saying is an LSD a diff locker? No, they're not. But, I mean, it's a good thing, and the crawl control, it does amazing things, but it's not twin locked as such. So getting back to the motor for a second, mm. the patrol you had was pretty heavily tuned, as you said before. Yep. What do you reckon had more pulling power, the patrol or this? Oh, look, it's gotta be this. I mean, the patrol had a big pump, big turbo and intercooler and all that sort of stuff on it. And to be honest, on paper, they're probably very similar. Um, you know, this one will have a little bit more, but being the auto, it's smooth and you just, you don't even know it. And then all of a sudden you, you're gone. <laughs> look, having been in that passenger seat when you hit it, yeah, it definitely pulls pretty hard. It's pretty cool, yeah. Now, favourite thing about the Cruiser? Mate, I'm not too sure. It's got to be the overall, you know. The ride quality is just second to none. Mm. And you just sit back in it and you don't have to think about it. You don't have gauges to watch and everything else. You just drive it. Yeah, it's pretty crazy having something this big, this capable that could go anywhere in Australia, but you're in the lap of luxury while you're doing it. Mm, 100%. So, final question, future plans for the Cruiser? Well, you know I'm not going to leave the motor stock, so I'm going to have a fiddle around with that. And to be honest, in the next couple of years, I'm going to cut it and extend it as well. So I, I love utes, so it'll be a dual cab ute in the future. And then as a dual cab ute with a bit of a chassis extension, there wouldn't be anything that would match it as an ultimate tourer, right? Not in my eyes, yeah. but you know, it's, it's a tourer, you know, as well. I'm not building a rock crawler and all that sort of stuff. I'm building something to go through the Simpson and around Australia again. Mm. Well, mate, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. That just about wraps up this episode of Adventure King's Rig Reviews. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to see what's up next.